Number one, we know that that, that cosmos or the universe is unimaginably big. But then in our modern times we discover that the small in its fullness is as full in its smallness as the universe out here is big in its fullness. And we realize when we think about this, we wouldn't ask some question. It's like, why does this happen and why does that happen? And it's like we're talking to some man because we get in this habit. But to think that the infinitely small and the infinitely large came about by God speaking. He spoke. And all of this came about. Science says there was a big bang. Same thing, right? <laughs> big bang, God spoke. Yeah. Right? So sometimes when we, when we question God, God, why do you allow this? God, why do you allow that? We have forgotten. You know, it's easy for us human beings to do that. We forget how all-encompassing God truly is. And so we'll ask a question as though we would ask another person or a great group of people. It happens to all of us to a lesser or greater degree. And that brings us then to the Father. John, could you pop that up? Here it comes, here it comes, it's coming, it's going to happen right now, this very second, it's going to pop on the screen. Oh, nice. <laughs> and we're all going to dance for joy. All right. That's coming very soon, folks. Very soon. you got to get control of Rich's little <laughs> slide machine. You need that. So, we do this thing unconsciously sometimes. We talk to God. We ask questions to God. Uh-oh as though he were a man. And we don't even know we're doing it. You know what that is? Can you light it at all? Can you see that, folks? Yeah. You know what it is? Who in this room has never seen that image? A cartoon or something? You got an image of God? Is that Michelangelo? That's Michelangelo, yes, Michelangelo, right? Of the Sistine Chapel. Now, you've either seen this or an image of it drawing, somebody else drawing it, you know, showing you that. So when I was a little kid, and I looked at this picture of picture books and magazines, you know, selling everything from soap to underwear, uh, that image, I thought, well, God's this Italian white guy <laughs> with a flowing beard like mine and flowing hair like... Um, <laughs> so there it is, this image that we grow up with. Of this big man, you know, all those jokers in the bars, you know. Hey, it's up to the guy upstairs. The big man upstairs. And that's the way, in some degree, we all kind of have this perception. We grow out of it, but then do we really? When we ask these questions, you know, because this, what does the scripture say? God is not a man, He is spirit, and He must be worshipped in truth. Now, the images in the Bible says he holds his hand and so on, but that's so that we can understand. Does he have a hand with five fingers? No. But we can understand it. You know, he runs faster than anyone, blah, blah, blah. You know, all those images so that we can get a hold of it, so that it makes sense to us. So we have this duality, see, of, of having these images given to us of how God operates, but knowing truly in our heart that he is not a man. He spoke, and all of this came about. But we hang on to these things, and we kind of, we kind of get it just in the back of our mind. And so we ask questions sometimes. There's nothing wrong, folks, with, you know, when, when you've lost a loved one in death, or in sickness, or you're in great pain, there's nothing wrong. The father's big. He's a father. Why? Why? Why is this happening to me? That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the questions about how God operates. You know, or why would he do this? Why does he do that? Well, he's sovereign, number one. And there is only so much we can understand. It's only so much that our minds can get, a, uh, get, a, get around. That is, uh, things like the Trinity. You know, you'll go crazy 
if you deny the Trinity, but you'll also go crazy if you try to define it. You know, you go nuts. And the duality of Jesus himself. How can a person be 100% man and 100% God? We have to take this on faith because that's what the scripture says. It's 100% both. So that's all. Before I, as I was talking about this huge fullness of the small and fullness of the big, now this is my opinion, folks. This will come up here. This is nothing. This is not scripture. That is, I think that this creation is right in the middle of the biggest big there is and the smallest small there is. I use that image. But we, as children, are in the middle. And who's in the center? Jesus. That came from Rich when we were talking about it. And I said, we're in the center? No, he said, we're in the middle. He's in the center of the middle. And that's how it works. That gives me a good working imagination of how, how big and small this is and our place in it. So, now that we, can we take that, that down again? So now that we know that, again, we remind ourselves that when we ask of God, when we talk about Him, we don't have to visualize Him because He gave us a visualization. He gave us Jesus. There's no way to envision God because he is spirit and truth. And that's the way it is. We'll be able to see some form of him when we're there with Jesus. Jesus, in, in the, with Christianity, we get a new body. That's what, that, that matches his. I don't spend much time speculating about things like that, but some folks do, and that's cool. So, now to Psalm 96. This celebration, in the Old Testament, remember, they're singing and a lot of their, they're under the law, and their songs about bringing sacrifices and so on. You have to translate all of that and realize that we are only sacrifices Jesus. We sacrifice all for all of you, for all of us. We no longer think that way. But they're still valuable, especially what uh, Javelin said. This sort of, I hope that this fills you with the spirit. And as Glenn said, also the mind. This is, this is the, the true way of Christians. That is, the heart should be full and the mind should be full. I encourage you, as, as Glenn did, to get into the scripture. Just a little time each week, folks. I know you're all busy trying to keep your act together. It's not easy for some folks to sit down for an hour and, and read something. But you'll never grow in grace. You can't be any more saved than you are. You're saved. But to grow in grace, you have to know the Lord. You see, it's not learning the, it's not learning verses. When we read this, we read it to get to know the author. God is the author. So when you read this, you're getting to know God. That's that's his point. So when these people sang these songs, you know when Javelin gave us that new one? Feel it. These folks, when they sang these songs, these songs, they had that same thing. How great is our God? That's another one I love. That just makes me well up with the question. How great is our God? Sing with me. How great is our God? You know? It just it fills me with emotion. So when these psalms, when you read the psalms, you can get a great deal of... Uh, understanding of who the ancient Hebrews were and how they're just like you. They're people with flesh and bones. They're not Bible people who live back then. So let's read together Psalm 96. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Praise His name. Proclaim His salvation day after day. Declare His glory among the nations. His marvelous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. For all gods of the nations are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before Him. Strength and glory are in His sanctuary. 
ascribe to the Lord, all families of nations, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due His name. Bring an offering and come into His courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of His holiness. Tremble before Him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. The world is firmly established. It cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let the sea resound and all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant and everything in them. Then all the trees of the forest will sing for joy. They will sing before the Lord, for He comes. He comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in His truth. Now, of course, we don't have a tune to go along with that, but they did. And they sang as fervently as we do, I assure you, folks. Their love of God, even without the Lord Jesus, their love of God and their strength and their belief in Him and their dependence on Him was as strong as ours is. Otherwise, they could never have made it, just like us. Now, in Ephesians 3, starting at verse 10, this is Paul speaking. And he addresses the, the wonder of the depth and the greatness of God. And here we go. Ephesians 3, picking up at 10, Paul speaking. His intent was that now, through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realm according to His eternal purpose, which He accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. In Him, and through faith in Him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. I ask you, therefore, not to be discouraged because of my sufferings for you, which are your glory, as it was in prison. You kicked around a lot, Paul. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom his whole family in heaven and on earth derives his name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have the power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and how long and how high and how deep his love. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of the fullness of God. Let's pray, folks. Thank you, Lord. The word is here. It's with us. It's in us. It's operative to us and through us. Praise you, Father, for all strength. We depend on you. We are your children. Give us the strength to remain children in your sight. Men and women in the world, but children in your sight. We have to deal, Father, with the world. You said so. We're in it, but we're not of it. We want to be that little child, Father in our faith, because you are our strength. You are our life through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So, let us go to the table of the Lord. Now, folks, this is, this is a wonderful celebration. Life.